of how Imbaun became high prophet in Aradak of all the gods save one. By Lord Dunsany. Imbaun was to be made high prophet in Aradak of all the gods save one. From Ardra, Rudra, and the lands beyond came all high prophets of the earth to the temple in Aradak of all the gods save one. And then they told Inbound how the secret of things was upon the summit of the dome of the Hall of Night, but faintly writ and in an unknown tongue. Midway in the night, between the setting and the rising sun, they led Imbound into the Hall of Night, and said to him, chanting all together, Imbound, 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 look up to the roof, where is writ, the secret of things, but faintly, and in an unknown tongue. And Imbound looked up, but darkness was so deep within the Hall of Night, that Imbound saw not even the high prophets who came from Ardra, Rudra, and the lands beyond, nor saw he aught in the Hall of Night at all. Then called the high prophets, What seest thou, Imbound? And Imbound said, I see not. Then called the high prophets, What knowest thou, Imbound? And Imbound said, I know not. Then spake the high prophet of Eld, of all the gods save one, who is the first on earth of prophets. O Imbound, we have all looked upwards in the hall of night towards the secret of things, and ever it was dark, and the secret faint, and in an unknown tongue. And now thou knowest what all high prophets know. And Imbound answered, I know. So Imbound became high prophet in Aradek, of all the gods save one, and prayed for all the people who knew not that there was darkness in the hall of night, or that the secret was writ faint and in an unknown tongue. These are the words of Imbound that he wrote in a book that all the people might know. In the twentieth night of the nine hundredth moon, as night came up the valley, I performed the mystic rites of each of the gods in the temple, as is my wont, lest any of the gods should grow angry in the night and whelm us while we slept. And as I uttered the last of certain secret words, I fell asleep in the temple, for I was weary, with my head against the altar of Dorozond. Then in the stillness, as I slept, there entered Dorozond by the temple door, in the guise of a man, and touched me on the shoulder, and I awoke. But when I saw that his eyes shone blue, and lit the whole of the temple, I knew that he was a god, though he came in mortal guise. And Dorozond said, Prophet of Dorozond, behold that the people may know. And he showed me the paths of Sish, stretching far down into the future time. Then he bade me arise and follow whither he pointed, speaking no words, but commanding with his eyes. Therefore, upon the twentieth night of the nine hundredth moon, I walked with Dorozond down the paths of Sish into the future time. And ever beside the way did men slay men, and the sum of their slaying was greater than the slaying of the pestilence of any of the evils of the gods. And cities arose and shed their houses in dust, and ever the desert returned again to its own and covered over and hid the last of all that had troubled its repose. And still men slew men. And I came at last to a time when men set their yoke no longer upon beasts, but made them beasts of iron. And after that did men slay men with mists. Then, because the slaying exceeded their desire, there came peace upon the world that was brought by the hand of the slayer and men slew men no more. And cities multiplied, and overthrew the desert, and conquered its repose. And suddenly I beheld that the end was near. For there was a stirring above Pagana, as of one who grows weary of resting, and I saw the hound Time 
crouched to spring, with his eyes upon the throats of the gods, shifting from throat to throat, and the drumming of Skarl grew faint. And if a god may fear, it seemed that there was fear upon the face of Dorozond, and he seized me by the hand, and led me back along the paths of time, that I might not see the end. Then I saw cities rise out of the dust again, and fall back into the desert, whence they had arisen. And again I slept in the temple of all the gods save one, with my head against the altar of Dorozond. Then again the temple was alight, but not with the light from the eyes of Dorozond. Only dawn came all blue out of the east, and shone through the arches of the temple. Then I awoke, and performed the morning rites and mysteries of all the gods save one, lest any of the gods be angry in the day, and take away the sun. And I knew that because I, who had been so near to it, had not beheld the end, that a man should never behold it, or know the doom of the gods. This they have hidden.'